Hello, my name's Audrey Scanlon. I'm the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Central Pennsylvania, and I'm coming to you today from an area just off the Bishop's Garden at our cathedral, St. Stephen's Cathedral in Harrisburg on Front Street in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And I'm here today because the theme of our video for the third week in Advent is joy. And as I thought about that this morning, I thought, where better to go than a playground where you hear delights of, of children in uh, pure, unfettered joy as they play. And so I'm expecting that at some point during this video, children are going to burst out of those doors behind me after their lunchtime and uh, come out for recess here in the play yard. Joy, of course, is a feeling of great pleasure. It's a feeling of happiness. And, and yet for us as Christians, I think that there is a deeper expression of joy that we know through the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus. Joy is mentioned, I looked it up, mentioned in the Bible more than a hundred times in the Old Testament and about 65 times in the New Testament. The Old Testament alone, the Hebrew scriptures have 15 different words that they use to express the feeling of joy. And so when I think about maybe secular joy, I think about um, uh, things that we love to do, things that we feel as expressions of, of happiness. Um, chocolate cake comes to mind. Doing something that I love, like hiking, comes to mind. And yet there is that deeper spiritual joy. The ultimate expression of that is when we attain eternal life through the resurrection through the resurrection of Jesus as we pass from our own earthly dwelling. That is, I think, um, the consummation of our earthly time. It's the ultimate joy as we meet God in heaven. But there is spiritual joy, deep joy that we can experience here on earth as well. And I think certainly I experience that in the sacraments when I receive the sacraments in the church. I receive a feeling of deep joy through being with family when my family is gathered around. I experience deep joy when I have sometimes an overwhelming abiding sense of God's presence, which happens from time to time. It actually happened to me in a meeting last week. We were meeting with the Board of Advisors for the Stevenson School, and the people around that table were talking and so committed to the mission of formation of lay and ordained people in our diocese and there was just a moment a turning and I you know a Holy Spirit moment in which I was flooded with a sense of well-being a sense of of real joy and then there's the joy that we derive from maybe doing something that we do really well or that we uh, like to do. I think I spend hours, hours each week in the kitchen in my home because I love to cook. And so that, for me, brings a sense of great joy. And so I wonder where you find joy, where you find deep joy. I'd like to share with you two places in scripture that we read about joy, both in the epistles. The first is from the second a uh, chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. He writes, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, have the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. That would make Paul's joy complete. Well, there is a, a version of the Holy Scriptures that I like to read from time to time. It's called The Message, and it's not a translation. It's a paraphrase of Scripture written by Eugene Peterson. And I looked up this section of uh, the second chapter of Philippians to see how it is that Eugene uh, Peterson talks about joy. And he says, if you've gotten anything at all out of following Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, 
And then instead of saying, complete my joy, he says, then do me a favor. And honestly, I don't think that's a robust enough, a deep enough expression of what St. Paul was really getting after. It's more than doing Paul a favor. It is a sense that in loving one another, we are completing, completing the joy for Paul. Well, later on in the epistles, about 20 years after Philippians was written, 20 or 25 years later, the second letter of John was written. And he writes this letter, it's kind of a funny letter because it's addressed to the elder, that would be John, writing to the elect lady. Now we don't know who the elect lady was. Most people think it was either a member of John's family or perhaps the church, one of the churches that he was addressing because we often ascribe the female pronoun to a church. In any regard, this letter that he writes to the elect lady, he says, although I have much to write to you, this is at the end, I would rather not use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to come to you and talk with you face to face so that our joy may be complete. And so for John being together with each other in shared same space and common space is what makes his joy complete. And I think that in these days, as we continue moving through a pandemic, yearning to be in the same room with each other, and now the vaccine and the booster allowing some of that, that our joy um, has been made complete again. And so those are some ideas that I have for you. I have a prayer to close us. I don't know where the kids are but I have a prayer for us that actually comes from the end of the baptismal rite. When we baptize a child after the water and after the chrismation, after all that's done, then this is the prayer that the officiant prays. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon us, upon these your servants, the forgiveness of sin and have raised them to new life, the new life of grace. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and here we are, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. And so friends, I hope that you have a very, very joyful week. We'll be together next week for our final week of Advent when the theme is peace. And I pray that until then, God will bless you and guide you and keep you always. And maybe if the kids come out later, I'll come and sneak a, sneak a sound clip of them playing so you can hear that unbridled joy that, that I just love to hear from my office window next door. God bless you all.